the best my name is nana abba anamo it's always a pleasure to come your way on wednesday evenings uh with star chats your personality profile show that you should never miss there's a reason we've been winning all the awards and so it's best you tune in every saturday evening ugh, wednesday evening at 7 p.m um I'm sure you've seen the flyer for my guests tonight, and a lot of you are anticipating. I don't know what exactly you're looking forward to, but I can assure you that it's going to be a great conversation, as you've heard him over and over on different platforms. So let's just get straight into it. Let me just remind you that the show is also live on Ultimate FM in Kumasi and Empire FM in Takradi. And as always, I spend a lot of time looking for intros and quotes in fact, quotes for my show. And I think this evening I found the perfect one from Robert Jordan in his book, The Fires of Heaven. It says that uh, the oak fought the wind and was broken. The willow bent when it must and survived. My guest tonight has lived and mastered the art of rising to every challenge. And the more I look at the quotes I just read, the more it speaks to the tenacity of the man. He was the bundle of joy. Two years after Ghana became a republic in the Garden City, gifted to a lawyer father and a stenographer mother. Royal International School in Kumasi was his first spot of formal education, and after breezing through his common entrance, went up the hill south to Infansipim School in Cape Coast, my city. His love for knowledge saw him emerge as prefect of the school's library and later returned to Kumasi for tertiary education at KNUST to pursue civil engineering. But before he could find his feet and have that conversation with his father about what his body of knowledge will bring him in future, a criminal hand walked into his home and ended his father's life. Braving through the loss, he finished the university race earned his degree and later an MSc with distinction in water and environmental engineering from the University of Surrey in the UK. His professional career was clear, but destiny had detours for him. Sports journalism wrapped him in glory with his plaudits for sports highlights and coverage of the 1988, 1992 and 1996 Olympic Games where his nimble use of language and dexterity in communication became the talk of the town and earned him admirers across the aisle. Politics was the other strand of him being interested in influencing decision making at the highest level. And considering what a military regime robbed him of, that's the gruesome murder of his father. He was passionate about being part of the path to bring back democracy through another vehicle other than the Umbrella Party, which had the dark days as its roots. So it was no wonder that in 2001, he was appointed press secretary for former President Kofor, a position he held till 2006. Eight years later, he braved the odds to become general secretary of the NPP. But that chapter was not without drama and controversy. Events and strained relations with then candidate and now President Kufuado saw him, Chairman Afoko, and Sami Krab suspended from the party and left in the cold. Today, he holds no official political leadership position, but is a proven colossus in the Elephant Party. So, is this the end of his political life, or is there more fuel left in the tank to be utilized? This ERP, with the quality of governance today, as a sharpshooter, Will he view our political culture as blossoming or deteriorating? The Tuesday born whose life kaleidoscope mirrors service, sacrifice, and selflessness with taste for the very best. Engineer Kwabne Japong is my guest tonight on Star 103.5 FM, Empire FM in Takradi, Ultimate FM in Kumasi, and around the world on starfm.com.gh. You're welcome to the show. Well, I, I think I'm really lost for words. <laughs> <laughs> that is what I was hoping to get. <laughs> That's right. I'm, I'm really lost for words. I just captured my life in yeah. the... Yes. In a page, I think. <laughs> Thank you very much, Nanaba. And yeah, I'm welcome. It's good to see you. Grateful to be here. Yeah, you know? it's good to see you. I mean, I've known you for so long. Many, many, many years. Yes, and you haven't changed. Really? No, you haven't. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't changed at all. Oh, You're still I thank God for that. Thank yeah, for that. <laughs> you haven't changed at all. And there's no way I'll start a conversation with you without bringing in football because football is the first thing i want to talk about that's right yeah especially with ghana nigeria on friday that's right and i'm sure you've you've 
in, in the time when you were a sports journalist, you commented on Ghana, Nigeria a number of times. Does I, this bring you any memories? It does, it does. Yeah. I mean, I remember in 1991, mm -hmm. that famous battle with the Green Eagles mm. in, in, in Lagos. Then mm -hmm. we used to play in the Lagos Surulere Stadium. Okay. And we had uh, Bukat Caesar was our coach at the time. Right. And that's when he threw in Odati Lamti, who was a young guy mm -hmm. playing for Anderlecht. And it was a surprise, right. you know, the likes of Yao Perko, because... This was a big tournament, and the Nigerians mm. had Kishi and that kind of mm. player, Friday, Laho, Epo. You know, it was wonderful. Right. We had beaten them 1 0 by a goal scored by Kwame Saramensa in Kumasi. Okay. And then it was 0 0. Edward Ansa was in, in goal in, in Nigeria. He had played in Nigeria for one mm. Yahoo Royal. And he made a miraculous save that was compared to Peter Shilton's save from Pele in the 1966 wow. World Cup. So, Spectacular. I mean, uh, Ghana, Nigeria, so many stories as a mm -hmm. young person, and that really excited my enthusiasm for football mm. um, and sports journalism. I quite remember we used to have Ghana, Nigeria friendship games. Okay. Many people have forgotten. <laughs> we yes. did? Yes, we did. How long ago was long? this? In the 70s. And we used to okay. do that, have athletics, boxing, and then the ground one at the Crow Stadium would be Green Eagles and the Black Stars. And I quite wow. remember they had a goalkeeper called Emmanuel Okala. Okay. That's how I'm sure the comedian got his name, ah. Bob Okala. <laughs> Emmanuel Okala was one of the most popular Nigerian goalkeepers, and he slapped Kusi Uzu in those days. <laughs> wow. Kusi Uzu was uh, the power. You know Kusi Have you heard of Kusi Uzu? Yeah, I've heard of Bofa him. Bofa yeah. yes. powerhouse Kusi yeah. Uzu, Black Stars captain, and he was a mighty guy at a right. corner kick. He slapped him. On the pitch? Oh, yeah, in those days, football was different. Today, uh, a lot has changed. And yeah, that's think, VR. Oh, apart from VR, yeah. they're very, very soft. Uh, yeah. They're very brutish defenders like Christian Chuku who would not let you move an inch. Right. Did you uh, prefer that to what we have now? I think now it's too soft. I mean, okay. players get touched in the box. And, and they every fall. foul is now a yellow card. And that's mm. completely wrong. It has to be with bad intentions. Mm. And even the handballs, it's unfair. I think it's uh, what are the defenders supposed to do, mm. you know? If it is intentional use of the hand to gain an advantage, mm -hmm. then I think that should be a penalty. Right. But a lot of the times you can see that there was no intention to gain unfair advantage. And I right. think football has softened. So the strikers, are, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are having a good time. <laughs> go back and ask the, the kinds of trouble that Maradona went through mm. in the 1982 World mm. Cup with Claudio Gentile, yeah. Eric Herricks of Belgium. Difficult Defenders, mm -hmm. brutal defenders mm. who will kick you all day. You know, now it's, it's a bit different. But could, I think could it's you the sign of the why times. A player like Cristiano Ronaldo can score over 800 goals in his I love career. Ronaldo because he's not naturally gifted, okay. but he's worked so compared hard. Compared to Messi? Yeah, compared to Messi. Okay. He's not naturally gifted. Mm. But with the limited talent that he has, mm. and I believe in hard work, okay. and so I love him so much because he's worked hard. Mm. And even at this age, look at what he's able to do. Yeah. You know, and he's always frustrated because he's determined, he has the passion to succeed, and the drive, the hard work, mm. and he's disciplined. Mm. And so I love him. Right. Of course, people talk about who the greatest. I'm not interested in that. <laughs> I think he's, he's done and if we, the, this generation, we are lucky to have the two of them play Absolutely, for so long. Absolutely, yeah. And um, to be living witnesses. Mm. Because I've seen quite a lot of great players in the past. And I think that nobody ever surpasses Diego Armando Maradona. Really? Yes. He's your all-time. All-time. In fact, I have a football club in Adaraka right uh -huh. now called Argentino. the juvenile team. Right. It's been there for 20 years. And we wow. produce some players for the national team. Right. The, the goalkeeper, Lawrence Atiziki, mm -hmm. was one of our goalkeepers at Argentinos in oh, Adaraka, see. just across the street I here. I see. Oh, so, so you went on to get a football team. That's oh, how yes, passionate you are I've always about. loved juvenile football. Right. So as a kid, in, I was born in Kumasi, mm -hmm. and you mentioned it. Yeah. And uh, we lived in Krofrum. Those who know Kumasi <laughs> and know Krofrum, it's a tough area, you know. Uh -huh. Uh, I, was, I was born to, I would say, middle-class parents, but I love the street. Right. And I had friends like Kormantin, yeah. Champon, Kojubwachi. They would come and pick you at home very early in the morning. Uh -huh. And then I will vanish from the house without right. even taking breakfast. And we we'll walk to Swami. There was a, there was and a your parents never complained? They would never see me. I will come back <laughs> later to get some lashes. <laughs> to get some lashes. But you go to Swami to go and watch Coles football. Right. Go to Ahimfie. 
go to Abbey's Park mm -hmm. and the likes of uh, Papakun, Upukunti. Mm. Those were Colts players at the time. There was a, the greatest Colts player, in my view, never became a successful footballer in Ghana. It's called Kofi Lefte. Oh, wow. Kofi Lefte. Ask anybody in Kumasi. In academic what happened to him? I don't know. Football is like that. Yeah. Sometimes it's not the best at the youth level who turn out at the professional yeah. level. Did you ever consider playing, though? Not really, a okay. bit. I mean, we, we used to hang around, play football in, mm. uh, in around corners, mm. and then we play for six. <laughs> there was one occasion we went to play, and I scored the winning goal, and they gave us six <laughs> X. <laughs> winning. <laughs> in growth room, yeah, also, also fun That was your bonus. Uh, yes, that's X. A, there's, there's, uh, there's a preschool, also fun to You yeah. mobilize all the kids in a round crew room, uh -huh. and then we'll play football. Right. And in those days, when you're young, you know, you're so enthusiastic. Yeah. And when it starts raining, that's when we jump into the streets to play football. <laughs> you know, you love it when yeah. it's raining. And, yeah. Uh, and the passion with which you talk about Colts football. That's you right. Know, it's, it leads me to my next question about the state of football in Ghana now. Many believe that the absence of a solid Colts system. That's right. Is can be attributed to I've, the sorry state of our football. I, I've said this many times, and mm. I'm very disappointed and by what has happened to Ghana soccer, the local football. Mm. I mean, gone were the days that everybody religiously, Sunday afternoon from church, you are the Accra Sports Stadium, Kumasi Sports mm -hmm. Stadium, who travel around the country to follow football clubs. Mm. Because I believe football clubs were then owned by communities. The communities had a link. Mm -hmm. So if you go to Cape Coast, there was Dwarfs, oh, yeah. there was Vipers, mm -hmm. there was Fankuba in Swedro, there was All Blacks. Even whole people think Volta Region don't play football. Where there was whole mighty eagles. Right. No, before oh, that. Oh, before that. Whole mighty eagles, whole sunset. Later on, ah. uh, you know, and then Abuzume Weavers. These are all... Oh, that's Abuzume right. had a team. Yes, Weavers. Uh, this um, Daniel Ado. Uh -huh. Daniel Ado, the stylist. Right, yeah, yeah. He used to play for Abuzume Weavers before oh, he I moved see. to Accra. Yeah. You know, and you go to Tamale, there was Bewa United. Mm. There were Savannah Stars before they came together to form Tamale Real United. Oh, it's only I the see. upper region. Had mighty rocks in Bulga, but they were not in the, uh, the top division. That's the mm. first division that we used to call it mm. in those days. And Brown Alpha United, before Katano, Kumasi mm. had cornerstones, mm. Asante Kotoko for the natives. Um, cornerstones for the migrants. So if you look right. at corners, you have Epson, who is a Fanti, Tete right. Goleku, who is an Elway, you know, oh. and then the girls. I and didn't all even know this. Oh, yes. So if you go to Fanti Newtown, that's where corners will train, oh. you know. So, uh, and Aunaga, you know, though, and yes. Adamu Danjuma, Cornerstones, Kotoko was big. Right. And I quite remember as a kid, my father took me to the stadium in 1971 and Cornerstones and Koto 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 were the defending African champions. Mm. It was one one. Corners had a striker called Gordon Prempe. Okay. Bushy head, you know. There was one of the few local indigenous mm. who were spraying for uh, well, cornerstones. cornerstones. But <laughs> Koto Koto Koto. <Traitor>. <laughs> Not exactly. But I mean, football in Accra, mm. if you go to Gamashi, it's Hazvuk. Mm. Gamashi, Osu, mm. is Accra Hazvuk. You go to La uh, Teshi Nungwa. Is Great Olympics. That's my team. That's your team. Oh, yeah. But there so was a precursor to that. Mm. Accra stands fast. You know oh. that. That, you know, Olympics, I, mm. you know, it was made up of stamp. It was originally stamp fast, then Olympics, then stamp fast broke again, and right. then stand, Accra stamp fast has disappeared. Right. But then in the 70s, the growth of the industrial teams. And there was even an Indafa League, industrial mm. league in Ghana, because we were playing a match of football. So the players, he used to work for CMB, mm. Bank of Ghana, and, and, the, and the like. Right. Okay? And so up came Akosumbo Textiles. Mm. Have you heard of the name? Yes. Akotex. Ako yes. yes. And when Kotoko were African champions, Akotex came to Kumasi and defeated us 3-0. <laughs> they had a player called That's nice. Yao Mark, Eric Amankwa, mm. Lumo Michel. Great players. You know, so we've seen things in the past. And la later on in life, in the late... 1779, Dumas, that's GTP, mm, mm -hmm. you know, they had a football team yeah. that was able to progress mm. into the national championship. Right. They had the players like Isaac Akwe, Ahmed Roxen, Willy Kluche, they were all from Dumas I in Tema. You know, so football was loved by people. And I think um, that's how saddened I feel mm. when I look at the list of the Premier League in Ghana today. And they are all individual clubs, clubs owned by individuals with no connection to any population center. I think football 
depends on an organic link between communities. Right. And we should try and restore it back to basics. Okay. Where we are heading towards, there has to be a throughput of talent. Mm. You understand? A production line of talent. And in those days, if you came to Accra, the likes of Noble Ares, Kenna Harrison Babies, mm. And he went to Kumasi, uh, Fabi Awasu, Young Koko. Hey, and yeah, Alaji, I that's how I got to know Alaji Grusa. I, I was see. a kid. No, no. Grusa had, King Faisal was a coal steam. Right. Grusa was corner stones. Oh. And anytime I meet Grusa, I tell him, Grusa, you are the cause of Cornice's demise. <laughs> because when you, you decided to leave your traditional yeah. club, Cornice, mm -hmm. and own your own personal club, which has no support base, mm -hmm. And then Cornice was destroyed. Cornice was like a production line of top players mm -hmm. for Asante Kotoko. Eventually, Golden Boy Isaac was 16 years when he, he broke into the scene. Haruna, uh, Yusuf, mm -hmm. a lot of players. Ernest Apple, all of them from right. Cornice Stones, they all became great players yeah. with Asante Kotoko. So Would you then say that you are quite disappointed that in the current, uh, not this current squad, but it's been like that for a while, that we are bringing in Ghanaian Ghanaian players based abroad, or no, Ghanaians, well, foreign <laughs> it's, players. It's, it's even difficult, it's difficult to describe. To describe they are foreign players with, you know, Ghanaian heritage. That's right. <laughs> and coming it's not into that play. If they were so much better, okay. I would accept it. Mm. But these guys are no better than what I've seen in our national league. I've watched some of the league matches. Right. The standard is quite okay. Do you watch the last Kotoko Hearts game, the President's Cup? I missed it. Okay. I missed it. It was a great game. Yes. Yeah. And I've watched matches between Kotoko Hearts and other teams. I watched it on Star Times. And, mm. and the, I think the quality is good. If we took a locally based team to Cameroon uh -huh. and we got even one point, that would be better than taking a foreign based team and going and get the same one point. Were you shocked? I was shocked. We've never done that before. Yeah. At least we get more than one point, <laughs> you know. So um, I think we have to get back to basics. Right. The way football is run is wrong. Mm -hmm. There is, I think, those in it now. Don't has it become too commercial? Football has been commercialized around okay. the world. All right. But the passion for those who run okay. to give something to football rather than taking something out of it, right. that's the most important. I used to serve as a member of the Black Stylist Committee mm. and the Black Satellites Committee in the early 90s. Mm. But when we were going to Barcelona, for instance, mm. I bought my own ticket to Spain. Wow. I didn't take... No, of course, there are people around. You can ask on Hineva Charles. He was the chairman of our committee. And was it that decision you personally made or the... Most of the At that time, right. those of us who were managing the Black Stars or the Black Meteors, it was just the passion of it. Mm. We're not interested in collecting allowances. Now, membership committee members go Everyone and Everyone takes a bonus. A bonus. Yeah. Once the players begin to realize that you are making money off their sweat, they lose regard for you. They lose their patriotism. Mm. But you see, appearing for your country is the pride that you have. Mm. So in the biggest football nations, mm -hmm. players don't talk about bonuses. They don't fight over bonuses. Mm. We all remember it's, it's the true. universal disgrace that befell us in Brazil. Oh, gosh. When thousands of dollars were shipped in the full view of CNN <laughs> to players who were waiting for it yeah. before they play. Yeah. I think players like that don't deserve our national colors to wear. We should not accept that. In, 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 in Europe, all the players, the money that you take as bonuses from these tournaments, they ask you to identify a charity mm -hmm. for that money to go to. You don't even keep it. They won't even keep it right. because they are imbibed with nationalism. They believe in what you're doing. So the materialism that has gripped this country in general mm -hmm. is something that I worry about. It's something I worry about, mm -hmm. and I think it has hurt our football. To the extent that I think sometimes the media too is part of it. They place far too much emphasis on international football. And I, I, I say this with a pinch of salt because I think I was the first to introduce a segment of international football <laughs> oh, on, sports, so. on sports highlights. <laughs> but it was at the tail end. At the tail now it's the it's, 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 it's first. It's amazing. Yeah, when you watch all the sports shows, it comes it first. Is, it is wrong. Yeah, I mean, you have to discuss Arsenal, United, Why? La Liga. Would you ever go to Spain and hear of a radio station talking about Olympics? <laughs> why? <laughs> so why? We that. should speak about our teams. Right. We should have coverage, a lot of uh, exposure for our players, mm. and, and fill the programs with them. And then if, at the end of it, we want to give a summary of what is happening mm. in Europe, fine. 
But these days, I think our people like rolling off their tongue, Mourinho days, oh, yeah. that, when we don't even know the, the coaches of our own national team. <laughs> <laughs> Was it hard for you to walk away from sports journalism? Um, not entirely, mm. because I, as you said in your intro, you know, from 88, I was a young guy from mm. school, went to the Seoul Olympics. I had decided, I loved the Olympic Games so much, right. that I had taken a plan that I would like to go to every Olympic Games mm -hmm. in my lifetime. <laughs> so 92 in Barcelona, I was mm. there, 96 in Atlanta. Mm. By 2000, when we were heading to Sydney, mm. I was now too engrossed in politics, politics and right. was heading towards the elections in 2000. Mm -hmm. I couldn't look the candidate Kufo in the eye and say I'm going to, to Olympi watch Olympic Games. So <laughs> that's, that was my end. But I, yeah. I follow it yeah. religiously on yeah. television. What do you make of our performance so far? Oh, it's, 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 it's nothing to write home mm -hmm. about. Such and, a and, shame. and I think in sports in general has suffered. There's something going on that we have to redress. We have to go back to basics. The schools don't have popular engaging sports contests anymore mm. and i think when you do it at the schools it engages everybody look at the science and mass quiz yeah yeah so why in those days at the we could even play cricket with achimota oh wow yes we were playing cricket <laughs> you understand apart from that hockey football tennis volleyball basketball these were all games that we were playing so when wow. st john's comes from takrade mm -hmm. because they were very good in basketball Okay. You know, St. Augustine's in Cape Coast were very good in basketball. Mm. But Kwabu Chwe in France, we were tops in soccer. Oh, you, really? You understand? I thought so. you were going to say we were tops in books. <laughs> oh, definitely. That, that was for granted. That was for granted. <laughs> I knew you would say that. <laughs> that, was, that was for granted. Yeah. Right. Okay, so fast forward. Um, 2000, you went into politics. Yeah. You know, you were speaking for President Kofo. That is after the election. After the election. But before that, there was a lot more. I mean, mm. in the early... 90s mm -hmm. when we were trying to form mm -hmm. the MPP mm -hmm. that was when you know men had to be counted it was not right. easy at all I mean yeah. I, I quite remember as a young man um, part of the young executive mm -hmm. forum we had a group of young liberals mm -hmm. who had stationed in Accra and uh, we wanted to support the MPP mm -hmm. at the time the many of them the likes of Kojo Redu. Kandapa, mm. Alan Shremartin, myself, Mark Menu, Akwesio Seije, Courage Kwashega, um, Cecilia Dapa, mm. you know, many others, you know, who I haven't mentioned, the Siu Bening, Kufin Tim Menu, a lot of them, Dr. Heyman, you know, those were difficult days. I remember. When you say difficult, what do you mean? Because at the time, the military dictatorship, led by Rawlins, mm -hmm. had crippled a lot of the businesses of Kwame Safwudu, Kwame Nabetos, they were in court, and many others. So even getting someone to stand and sit on national television mm -hmm. and do party political broadcasts was not an easy option. Mm -hmm. And I was a young civil engineer at Ghana mm -hmm. Highway Authority, mm -hmm. public servant, and I quite remember... You were not fired? No, I wasn't fired, okay. but it became very uncomfortable. Okay. I quite remember this very famous meeting we had in Dr. Safwadu's house in mm -hmm. East Lagos. In those days, these days when I passed through that street, it's full of banks. It was yes. all bush, yeah. you know, and uh, there were quite a number of senior people there, and uh, most of them have, have passed. Dr. Kwame Safwadu himself, mm -hmm. Dr. Selby, um, Dr. Kofojo, uh, tre the treasurer of the party at the mm -hmm. time, uh, Hakman Oswajima, mm -hmm. Jacob Echebilamti was the head of the publicity committee, um, Haruna Atta mm. was a mm. member of the publicity committee, Kweku Opoku as well. And they, everybody, when the question was put, mm. who would volunteer to do party political broadcasts? And everybody's head went down like that. You know, it was Out of fear? Uh, there was a lot of well, right. apprehension, a lot of right. things. Mm. But I remember Dr. Selby turning around and said, you are the young one. You've got to sacrifice for the future. Right. You are the face on national television. I'd been hosting sports well, for a long, yeah, for exactly. long time. So I had to sacrifice. Right. Okay. Uh, Thirty years to sit on national television yeah. as a worker at Ghana Highway Authority yeah. and do the party political broadcast for Professor Edubwa and mm -hmm. do the campaigns, the adverts, mm -hmm. and all that. And uh, I think Madam, um, the former Attorney General, who used to do some of it. Uh, Akufu, mm. Gloria. So, Gloria. Gloria, yeah, Gloria. Akufu, yes, yes. Yeah. At the time, it wasn't easy mm. to have the courage right. to do that at the time. And sometimes when you go back to work and you look your bosses in the <laughs> eye, everybody 
you know. <laughs> They're staying away from they me. They stay away from you. <laughs> they stay away from you. So it, it, it was very tough. So when mm. we talk about sacrifice, mm. I look at some of the elders of our party at the time, mm -hmm. the likes of B.J. Darocha. These are people who yeah. committed their lives to the struggle. Mm. But they were not materialistic at all. They didn't look for anything out of it. They wanted to contribute something to this tradition. Mm. Again, uh, Stephen Kreku, for instance. Mm -hmm. I'm sure if, uh, if you've heard the name before. Definitely, yes. yeah. Stephen yeah, Stephen Kreku, you know, Koman Peitu. You know, many of them at Dubuahene. I mean, they, they committed themselves to fighting for the return of democracy in the country. And that is the kind of uh, uh, legacy we have to bequeath mm -hmm. to the oncoming generations. And today, when I look at the younger politicians and their focus on materialism and uh, you know, the party sometimes has been monetized, and you look at that and you begin to wonder. In our time, it was no, nothing like that. We gave something to the party. What changed? I, I think a lot, a lot changed. You know, people get disappointed with leadership, the mm -hmm. way they see things go. But I think what, what is most important <coughs> is for us to restore ourselves to the values that we, we cherish. And that is when I talk about service, mm -hmm. serving the party, sacrificing, being able to risk yourself for the collective good, mm -hmm. and being selfless. Once you have these character traits, you are able to discharge your responsibility as a true patriot. Mm -hmm. We did not choose the patriotic for nothing. It was based on the, the fact that you should work what you can give to the country. Mm -hmm. And I want the society to understand that let's think about what we can do for Ghana is most importantly. We are in government or we serve governments so that we can create an environment for everybody to be happy. Is that happening now? I don't think a lot of that is happening. We have to change that because I hear a lot of our party people are having got this, that, that. You know, it's parties are voted into power to create an environment for the whole country to thrive. Okay. And it's important we do that that we survive, you know. It's all because of sometimes some of the feelers they are getting from political appointees, the dispensing of patronage, and that kind of stuff. Right. It is important that we recognize that we are in to serve our country. And especially in times like this, you know, we know that there's a lot of um, heat around the world, mm -hmm. okay? So we as leaders, when we say we should tighten our belts, then we have to lead by example. Mm. So it's absolutely vital, you know. So as political leaders, we have to inspire. And what is important? Political parties are based on the grassroots, and the grassroots are the ones who should be invested with political authority. You know, once they begin to feel there is a disconnect, then that creates apprehension and problems. Mm. So I'm, I'm very worried that, especially with the recent elections going on, the kinds the, of in troubles- your, In your party. In, yeah, the kinds of troubles that we are hearing. I mean, in times past, when there is a polling station election, you never even hear it. Polling stations are the basic unit of political activity. How did you do and it as general secretary yes. to keep it on the low? Because you see, you have to have an even playing field. Okay. Because I believe the, the delegates will always choose who they see fit to lead them. Don't attempt to steer them in any way. Leave them alone, create an enabling environment, and let everybody who intends to be a leader in the party mm -hmm. go and tell their story and win the confidence of that electorate. Yeah. In our time, we were able to stage over 250 parliamentary primaries one single day. One single day in 2015. In a day? Yes. How did you do that? <laughs> Simple, because what you do is to make sure that everybody is satisfied with the album that you have at the local level. Okay. But how do you, how do you ensure that they are satisfied? It was very simple. Okay. Because I, we developed the concept of getting them registered at the local level. Okay. And you see, political party supporters or sympathizers, they come in different categories. If you ask for a party meeting at the polling station. Right. I can tell you, you can only have about 20 or 10 people. And they normally know themselves. Mm. So if you go to my polling station near uh, Otinshi, where I stay at mm. East Legon, they know themselves. Right. So when you tell them to elect their own five, they know the people who have been working with them. 
any attempt to doctor that, you know, will be met with a lot of uh, resistance. Mm. You know, and right now... Um, is that what you think is happening well, now? People, is it being they're, doctored? They're, no, I wouldn't say it's okay. being doctored. Okay. The, some people feel there's okay. a, an attempt to orchestrate. All Let's right. allow the grassroots to choose who their are five... Why, why, would they, why would there be an attempt to orchestrate? I mean, if it's... I don't... Want, I don't I, I, what is important okay. for me now, and mm. I think it's important that we all focus okay. on the party and the government. Okay. In fact, if you are a true MPP person, mm. the fact that we are in the second year of our second term means that we should not take for granted the trust that the people... Do you think people still trust you? Do Ghanaians still trust the NPP? despite the many promises you made to Ghanaians. Well, I think even the government, mm. by going to the retreats last week, admits that there are issues that it can deal with. But okay. all of us have to pray and work hard that these things improve. And there's enough time. There is enough time. Mm. Of course, the opposition will try and put a lot of pressure with a lot of propaganda and create that kind of perception. It is incumbent on us as a political party and as leaders to help in whatever way to make sure we have a successful tenure and work to the satisfaction of the Ghanaian Would you people. Say that, that, is, that for me mm -hmm. is more important than who succeeds the president. Okay. And I think now, unfortunately, the impression is created as if we are waiting to install someone, which is wrong. We shouldn't do that. We create the impression we believe more in campaigning than governing. We have been put in office to govern to do things to the satisfaction of the Ghanaian people. And we have a lot of great flagship um, programs, programs that we have put in place. But of course, there's always room for improvement. Mm. And it's important that as a government in Ghana... There are many Ghanaians who believe that these flagship programs haven't helped them at all. I mean, the, 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 the one thing the NPP is always happy to talk about first is free SHS. Uh, which has had its own challenges. But yes, it's been successful uh, thus far. A lot of Ghanaians have benefited. But you take other flagship programs that Look, the party campaigned on. What is important mm -hmm. for political parties is that to have the enthusiasm at the base. Parties is, that, is that enthusiasm part, still there? We have to reignite it. There's no doubt, if you want to be honest, mm -hmm. that there are a lot of issues that people have raised. But this is our party. They love the party. One of the issues. And it's important. Right. One minute. One yeah. of the issues they keep raising at the grassroots yeah. is that they all fought together, the you know, to come to power in 2016. Yes. But it appears that a few within the NPP have benefited, and majority of them have been left in the cold. Do you notice well, that? Well, what 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 is important mm. as a political party? Mm. And I think I've said this many times, and I want to repeat it here. Mm. We don't go into power to cut up a cake and share it amongst our supporters. Mm -hmm. We don't do that. Mm -hmm. What is important is to create an environment. We are the party that was good for business. And any time the MPP came to power, the business community loved it. Now they're okay? complaining. Yeah. So it means that we have to go back, have consultations, and see where we can improve. Do you think your and party we has have been to be honest able to do that? in, in governan governance? Have they been honest enough with Ghanaians? Well, I think the party itself hasn't been very strong. That's why I always believed in building a strong party. Okay. A party... What has caused the weakness? <laughs> you, if you it don't is want, weak. You don't, you don't want us to finish... <laughs> you don't want me to finish answering this question. Of course I question. want to, but yeah. I mean... What is important mm -hmm. is that you should have a party that can look the executive in the eye and mm -hmm. have a real discussion. Okay. And make sure that whatever you're doing in yours to the benefit of the, of the country and the party. Could, that could lead to problems, no? That, no, not necessarily. We've been in power before. This is not the first time we've been in power. You know, you understand that. So I think it's important that we do not create the impression that parties go into office, and I know parties go into office just to share up things for themselves. It is wrong, whether it is done by the NDC or the MPP. We need people at the corridors of power who are speaking for Ghana. Mm. You know, we don't want to, any beautiful policy that comes into this country, people see it as a procurement opportunity. Right. We shouldn't do that. We should have the national interest paramount. That is too critical. And it's something that I am very passionate about. Okay. And that's why I dedicated myself to, to serve this party, to okay. sacrifice for this party. So it's absolutely important. If you look at the likes of Professor Edubohan, mm. and what they have been through, to be able to bring us where we are today and 
I see some of the things that happen, we have to rethink and reconnect with the people. Thanks, Sasha. It's, it's, uh, it's absolutely important that those values become supreme. Okay. It's absolutely important that those values become values supreme. Values such as you talk about I've talked about service, selflessness, service, sacrifice. That's right. right. I mean, for instance, I was a bit taken aback. Mm. You know, I was press secretary for six years. Mm. I never used to ride around with convoys. These are little, little things. But mm. Ghanaians, they say, When you go on the wrong side of Ghanaians, that's when they really hurt you at elections. So we have to be humble. We have to work for the benefit of Ghanaians. There should be no scramble for the country. And it's a few of the things Ghanaians also talk about when they when they have to have a conversation about this administration. They talk about profligacy. You say we should tighten our belts, but yours is so loose. So they talk about profligacy. They talk about, um, they talk about arrogance. Arrogance, that ministers have become arrogant, DCs are arrogant, uh, the person with the least appointment is arrogant. There's such air of arrogance around. And it, it's sad that the same about NPP, they say they have the men, but it appears that you never really have the men because uh, things are going south. I wouldn't respond to that by, look, okay. I, I'm here, it's a personality uh, That's interview. True. <laughs> okay, so I, I don't think. Right. Um, I, as, a, as, as an MPP person, mm. I use all the channels of communication I have, mm. and I have back channels mm. to talk to some of my friends in government. And of course, I'm not going to sit here publicly and say all the kinds of stuff that you expect me to say. But most importantly... But you know it's true. What is important is mm. that we have a duty. Okay. We have a duty. We have a mandate. And we, that mandate should not be abused. It's absolutely vital mm. that we don't abuse that mandate. Okay. We go on and let the, the grassroots know that they have the power. In fact, when I was General Secretary, I always adopted the posture that all the 275 constituencies should be like infantry fighting units. Mm. So you recall, I created accounts, made sure that we put in account for all of them to be connected to Ghana Commercial Bank. You start rebuilding the party at the base, give them the wherewithal to be able to do political campaigning at the local level. Mm. The confidence and the inspiration. Once you inspire them, they will do more. They'll, they'll be dedicated, they'll sacrifice, and that's the beauty of political party mm. activity. This party was formed on the back of volunteering spirit, when people are dedicated to sell of their houses and mm. contribute to the growth of the party. Mm. Okay? So that spirit, which appears to have waned, is something that we have to work hard to rejuvenate. Right. Okay? And I use myself as an example. Are you happy with the work of the current General Secretary? I'm not here to criticize one person okay. or anybody. All I'm trying to say is that mm. we have a duty to the Ghanaian people. Okay. We have a duty to the Ghanaian people. And I know the MPP has a base that is much stronger than the NDC. Really? Oh, I do. And we are always guaranteed something like 46, 47% mm. in an election. It's absolutely important. So are they? Maybe I would, I would say 42, 43, <laughs> but it's, it's close. In right. Ghana, elections are always mm. going to be close, mm. always going to be close. Mm. But we have, we have the head start. Okay. And it only depends on how we conduct ourselves okay. in office and make sure that the base is happy with what we are doing. Mm. And actually, we have, we have the processes to be able to determine that. Okay. Now, I, I want to move on to a part of your biography. Uh, that reads, in April 2014, he was massively elected as a general secretary of the NPP. His tenure as general secretary was, however, unceremoniously curtailed halfway under a sleuth of concocted allegations and vile propaganda. Yes. Yeah. You still stand by that? Of course I do. I mean, look, as I've indicated earlier, I am an eternal patriot of this party. And it didn't start from today. Seven, a Dubois, and in Kufo. Mm -hmm. Akufuado, mm. Chermating, been press secretary for six years, mm -hmm. and then general secretary. I believe in the supremacy of the party. So we set about to build a party that is strong at the base. Of course, some people were not happy with it. Okay? So all sorts of things were, happened. And we all knew the end result. Mm. But 
I am I believe that when you, you mean well, when you mean well and you love your party, nothing can take you away from your focus. So in spite of all that You never once thought of giving up on the party. No, not at all. In right. fact in twenty sixteen, mm -hmm. towards the the, uh, towards the elections in 2016, mm -hmm. I made sure I put together resources and supported 10 constituencies. Oh, in the despite the problem. I was on suspension. Right. But I said, look, I have to sacrifice my party. In fact, what happened, not that I supported or I believed in what happened, mm -hmm. but I felt that I didn't want to endanger the chances of this party in 2016. So right. I kept quiet, okay. kept very silent. Not that I didn't have anything to say, but I, fe I felt the party was supreme. Mm -hmm. I am always prepared to sacrifice myself for the past. Because that's what you had done in the past. In the sacrifice, past, yeah. you know. So I mobilized resources. Northern region, 20 constituencies. Brown for 20 constituencies. Ashanti, 10 co And many others. Just to support them. And again, in 2020, I was still on suspension. Yeah. And the president called me to come and help with the campaign and be around the campaign. Unconditional love for this party. I didn't ask for anything. I didn't request for anything. I went out there like I usually do. Mm -hmm. The support that I gave to Kufo, the support I gave to Dubois, I gave it to him. We went around the country. And even with that, it was a very close victory. Yeah. You know that. Yeah. You know that. And since then, I'm here. Right. Okay? I'm happy. Carried on with my life because I love the party. What is important is the principles that Buzia, Dankwa, and the rest, they stood for. You understand? Yeah. When we say development in freedom, mm. we truly mean development in freedom. When we talk about public service, we mean serving the public. So it's absolutely vital mm. that we, the leadership of the MPP and all political parties, have to communicate this. If we allow the general population to lose faith in political authority, mm. and I quite remember in 20. 207, when I see him, Katia was calling the 17 uh, aspirants <laughs> thieves. I, I remember. The beauty pageant. Uh, yes, I, I retorted <laughs> powerfully in an interview. Mm -hmm. Well, he was. I said, you shouldn't do that. For political expediency, if you run down the political establishment, you are destroying the very foundation of our country. And it's become so, it's, it's a cliche now that politicians are associated with, you know, stealing. It's, it, I think it's wrong. Worry. it is. It worries me. Yeah. In fact, that motivates me to remain in politics. Right. I made most of my whatever I have when I was a civil engineer, right. young consultant. Yeah. Where I stay. In fact, I, I stayed in my house and decided never to move into a government bungalow, although the place was far, very far at yes, the time. I know. National <laughs> security always kept on. You have an apartment in Contumens. I said no. The bad experience I had living with my dad in the government bungalow and how we were uh, right. you know, jettisoned from there after his shocking demise. I said I would never stay in a government bungalow. But I'm just saying this, mm. that we should communicate the right things to the people of Ghana. Okay. That not all politicians and that a lot of people have served this country who mean well. And there are people who mean well for this country. And so this thing that is hanging around like a dark cloud that politicians come in and come and, and dig up gold mm. is something that we have to work at our generation. No, a lot of people generation. feel it's a, it's a career uh, to it be should, a politician. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. <laughs> it shouldn't be. Sh everybody should build a career for himself. Mm. It's a calling to service. Right. And when you are given the opportunity to serve, that's what you have to do to serve your people with the best of intentions. Mm. Of course, it will come with some remuneration, but that is not what it is. Right. Because all the great people that we talk about, the Daruches of this world, mm. the Peter Lajetes of this mm. world, at the beginning of the party, who were sacrificing, I don't think you can move around a cry and start mentioning houses yeah. that they have. Uh -huh. They didn't need it, yeah. and it's not necessary. And we need to be able to communicate that to the younger generation, so that they understand there's joy in serving your country. Loyally. I'm not sure how that will happen now. <laughs> well, I think it's going on. I mean, yeah? I, I will be on a crusade to do that, to All convince right. the younger generation. We need to put our hands on our chest and, and, and say the Pledge of Ghana and the National it. Anthem and mean and know the words and understand the words in the right. National Anthem because there's beauty in love in your country. Right. And that is what it is. Okay. But though it was reported a couple of, 
I think somewhere last year that you had an appointment at Gapoha. What happened to it? I don't know why people are fascinated with positions. <laughs> I, I don't know. I've, I've told you. I've never been fascinated yeah. with positions. In fact, Did you decline it? No. Um, I've never been offered any position. Oh, you were never I've, offered I've that? I've never been offered any position. I've not had any discussion with the president talking about positions. No. The president has the prerogative to put up his team, and I think we should respect that prerogative. Okay. It's constitutionally mandated. Um, I worry about the, the way we have become celebratory about even appointments. I've seen mm. people get appointments and showered with powder. Absolutely. It's wrong. Yeah, it's a time to take. It's wrong. And ministers come to, uh, what do you call it, vetting, and there's a, a retinue of chiefs and all that. Yeah. That, that is wrong. Yeah. We because we, we, we they see opportunities It now. is wrong. It is, you see, you, you have not been given a difficult task. So it is not time to celebrate. It is time to think through the tax and make sure that you achieve your targets. And then when you are able to achieve those targets, then we can come and pour the powder on you. So we should stop this celebratory mm -hmm. atmosphere that hangs around political appointee, appointees. Mm -hmm. Because they, it makes them lose the focus. The main calling and the, the reason why they have been appointed is to serve the interests of the Ghanaian people, right. especially the many disadvantaged. So that should be the focus of politics and I think I stick by that mm. uh, it, 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 I'm sure you'll be the only one on this campaign <laughs> I'm not no, sure no, any no. of your yeah, colleagues will I, join I, you. I, I think I think you're, you're getting it wrong really I, I, I speak to a lot of people and they are people are passionate about this right? country not dissolution they are passionate about okay. this country and I think we have to push that okay and let the younger generation know that there's joy in serving your country right. and creating a beautiful country I just came back from Costa Rica attending mm. the world engineering convention and you go to the beautiful country neat I never saw any extension behind anybody's land boundary mm. not one not in the city capital San Juan or San Pedro anywhere else I was yeah and you come to Ghana. The last time I was in Kumasi, I was almost in tears. Yeah. I went back to where I used to stay in Crow Room as a kid. Mm -hmm. You know, and I remember as young. It's changed? 10, 12, mm. we would hide under the hedges because it was all green. Oh, it's all gone and now. Green is all gone, replaced by kiosks and containers. And it's, it's unsightly. When people say that engineers of this country have failed us, do you agree? Well, I, we accept that to a certain extent. Okay. Because I. I served as the executive director yeah. for close to four years. Right. And it's one of the uh, crusades I, I pushed on, mm. that we don't have a good name here because when it rains and there are, there's floods, and, you know, in fact, the, the built environment. Isn't it because there's people no, are relying on unprofessional, unqualified true, engineers? Because we don't have quality assurance and okay. quality control. Okay. There is no attempt to enforce re regulations. The regulations are there. Mm. Okay, but people don't observe those regulations. There's no conformity fact, to standards. Most of the time, they don't know the regulations. That's right. They, yeah. don't, they don't conform. So we have a huge problem. Mm. And there are certain things that have happened that I'm not happy about, especially okay. the balkanization of the assemblies. I don't mm. know whose advice it was. In Accra, for instance, mm. <laughs> we have about how many assemblies oh, now? Oh, so many of them. It's, which is something yeah. that really works again, having proper central engineering management of the built environment right. you know so those are things that as professionals and I, I, we we used to discuss that at our annual conferences we talked to our people and so now we have a new engineering council law in place mm. that will sanction engineers who are oh, who, who go off oh, of course and right. we have we are we are we are really putting emphasis on ethics training because again shoddy work and all the kinds of problems if you believe in ethics and you are ethically on cue, mm. then we can reduce the occurrences of some of these things. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now, also, one thing that I, I, I have noticed about you is that you're a family man. Uh, you, 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 you are a family man. Yes, I, I am. I am. I am. Yeah. Um, you know, um, yes, I am a family yeah, man. Did I'm losing your father at a very early age yes. have anything to do with? your current of, of, attitude to family of course of okay. course i mean that was the most difficult time in my life how I did mean, you make it i mean you know living in rich yeah you know in a, in a big bungalow a judge's son and yeah. then just being thrown out yeah and having to look for a place in uh, a nurse's one room flat in kolebu to put up 
mm. you know, and having to fetch water early morning, you know, at 4 a.m., you know, struggling to have a meal. Fortunately, in those days, the universities, uh, you didn't have to pay that much. Mm. And so I was fortunate. I was able to struggle through university. So I said to myself, um, because we, we were a large family and mm. a lot of siblings, so my mom had to take care of the little ones, and then I had to hustle. I had to just wow. find my way and struggle through um, because there was nobody to turn to. But of course, God, I'm, I'm very divine, yeah. and uh, God gave me that mental fortitude, and my father inculcated a lot of um, steel into me. He, he yeah. was a tough guy, mm. but he was not materialistic. And, uh, you know, when you are young, you argue with your parents, you don't have this, you don't have that. And your friends, all your friends have it out in front of him. That's right. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so um, that builds me, you know, mm. to, to have the feeling for especially the, the empathy and the, right. and for people. And so I know how it feels to go without a meal mm. in a day. So, and so I support a lot of people, even in my current situation when right. I don't have very much. Yeah. But I support a lot of people yeah. because I identify with them. Right. And I think anybody who goes into politics and who drives around a car and you get to a traffic joint and you see these women with children sweating yeah. under the sun and you don't feel a pain in your heart, you have no business coming around politics. Right. It's very important. It is important that political authors have empathy and know that they are there to serve the public not to lord it on ourselves. Right. So when we create the impression, as you said, mm. you know, when people feel that political figures are lorded it over them, it's not good, especially right. in a country such as Ghana. Right. We have to be very humane, very caring in the way we talk to people, mm. the respect. I've looked at how political discourse on television and radio, radio. has completely deteriorated. Yes. People think that you have to come and shout, and insult, insult people, yeah. and disrespect people, and that makes you a politician. Be I, because I, when you do that, you get a position. You catch the eye it, of whoever is appointed. It is wrong. Right. I remember as general secretary, when former President Mahama was on tour in other parts of the uh, in Germany, or places, mm. some of our supporters were displaying banners attacking him, and I said it was wrong. I got attacks from, from within my party. Mm -hmm. And if you had seen that interview, as if I was a prophet, I said, I would not like to see future President Akufuado treated like that. Mm. You understand? So what is wrong is wrong. Right. We have to, you know, today, I watch social media and Ghanaians, as if we've forgotten our culture. You might disagree with the president or some political leader mm. or a chief. Yeah. But as a young Ghanaian, you can't insult your president. It's, you that, can't it's one of my biggest problems, you can't. honestly. And yeah. people just insult, yeah. use unprintable words. Yeah. And they have huge following, and yeah. so other people want to do the same. Yeah. That is wrong. And we have to, we've got to cut through it and find a way, inspire them to change that attitude. Yeah. It's absolutely vital. Yeah. I don't want to lose hope in that. You and don't. I, I do believe that we have to get there. And it, it, it starts with us okay. so that we couldn't have party chairmen sit on radio, use very uncouth and unethical language. Mm -hmm. Once we stop that, then others will follow uh, others will follow right. because the young people are listening to all of us right. they need to have inspiration from us and we have to lead by example mm. so even the way we communicate and i remember as general secretary going to the ndc conference i still have the document that i sent to them saying that look for the foreseeable future these are the two political traditions that are going to run I remember. The you remember yeah. that i remember and that. i said yeah. that the respect that we show to each other is very vital mm for the health and the harmony and the social cohesion of this our country. Our social construct as a people, we are a one people, and we should believe in the pride of our Ghanaian-ness. You know? So I hate ethnocentricity. I mm. hate it. And I think it's important that as Ghanaians, we respect each other, we can aggressively or violently disagree, mm -hmm. verbally, you know, and express our opinion. But it's against our culture mm. to be insulting our leaders much more <laughs> our heads of state. Yeah. It is completely wrong. Mm. And I think a lot of you, the media people, should discourage it. 
I see some of you. Oh, you'll be attacked. You, you, I've been attacked for, for saying that the president shouldn't. I mean, there's a way of expressing your views that's right. without insulting the president. And I was called all sorts of names. It yeah. doesn't matter. We, ha we have to fight you. You have, you have my backing <laughs> on that. You do. Uh, you, yes, I, I, I do have. It's not as if I'm saying it today. It's something I've always believed in. Right. We as Ghanaians are properly brought up. Mm. We have to respect the way we do things. And we also should demand respect from Absolutely. our leaders and how Absolutely. they conduct things Absolutely. and how they run our country. Did you ever forgive ex-President Rawlings, the late President Rawlings? Look, like I told you, you know, mm. when you are so young and you go through such trauma mm. and you are able to survive through it. And make it this way. And I, I wouldn't say I've made it. You yet. have. I thank God for where I am. <laughs> right. You know. Um, I think both he and Kojo Chikata, they died with the truth. Mm. They, between the two of them, they know who did it. They but know who killed your dad? Of course, they know. I don't think Amate Kwe or any of the, the uh, soldiers, 23-year-old Amate the Kaina, they had no connection to my dad and his colleagues. They would not, there was no way they would just walk to their houses, pick them and, and go and execute them in such a savage manner. They must have been given some instruction. But it's okay. Life... I believe in God eternally, member of the Methodist Men's Fellowship. I'm oh, proud, really? Proud of my, my Men's Fellowship. I yeah. worship at Mount Sinai. Oh, Methodist. And That's why you went Pabena. to Infancipim. Yes. My whole family is Methodist. My father went to Infancipim. Ah. I went to Infancipim. My son went to Infancipim. So I oh, told wow. him that his son has to go Not to Infancipim. So we have four generations. Are your daughters going to Wesley Girls? Unfortunately not. My wife went to Wesley Girls. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. It's a proper mobile gay house. That's right. Right. That, that, that's right. So <laughs> I, I, I think that in life, you, you have to have the spirit of forgiveness. What was your reaction when you heard reports that he had passed on? Oh, that was... Uh, it's difficult to even recount because okay. I become very emotional. I was a young person. You know, because of my love for soccer, mm. I had gone to the stadium that Wednesday, you know, and uh, I was sitting at the table having dinner with him at night. It must have been around 8 o'clock. Those days the curfew was around 9 or mm -hmm. so, and the call came through that uh, Justice Grantiando was not well. They used to have their chambers very close in Why? the Supreme Court building, so um, my father was needed outside uh, to go and have a look. It was a trick. I, oh. I didn't follow him out. Mm. And, you know, so I just felt he left. And that's it. I went to bed. They didn't know anything that happened that night, you know, hoping that he would come and complete his meal. In the morning, we got um, a, call, um, a visit from Mrs. Yvonne Sarkodie, um, one of the judges. Mm. Uh, so she was coming to report to my father, because we were next door neighbors, right. that... Um, her husband had been picked the previous night. So I then went up to my father's bedroom. And, and then he wasn't there? He wasn't there. I came back to the dining table. The food was still as it was. Oops. Those areas had a lot of judges around. So I went to my mother's room. She was asleep. You know, and uh, so I rushed to Justice Aduse, who was we were, we were sharing war with the Malian ambassador. Justice mm. Aduse was just nest. And then when I got there, and he called Apalu, uh, Justice Apalu was mm -hmm. then the Chief Justice. That was the time in the morning that we realized that something had happened. Wow. But even at that time, we only knew that they had been kidnapped. So the next 72 hours were perhaps the most difficult times right. in my life. You know, we sat in the house waiting and hoping to hear something, you know, and Again, Sunday, in, in, in that shape, I said to myself, the only thing I can do maybe to go and watch a football game yeah. again to try so and reduce, yeah, yeah, to distract me a bit. So we we're very close to the stadium, you know, where, yeah. where now we have the National Cathedral, mm -hmm. one of those bungalows. Yeah. So I walked to the stadium, watched the match. It must have been a Wafu match, Hazakis, I think. And then when I was coming home, I realized that there were a lot of cars around the house and they were beckoning me to you know, to come. I didn't understand what it was. So I rushed and they told me, oh, and they've just been informed that uh, the charred bodies of my dad and his colleagues, you know, I was 20 years at the time. So it was hard. So, so I left home with one of my best friends, you know, 
He was just as a Duse's son. He's called BB. He also died quite recently. I was at his funeral. Um, yeah. He's a young, he was my classmate. He was an mm. saddle, fine mm. gentleman. So I went with him to Jolu, to her sister's place, and that's where I spent the night. Mm. And at dawn, was it 4 a.m.? Those days, you know, there was only one radio station yeah. in Ghana. KBC. And they were, you know, being controlled by the state. So it was only BBC, which was an outlet. It was only right. BBC when BBC confirmed it. At, at the, uh, is it, they have this early morning program mm. on Africa. Mm. You know, the news that mm. I really, it hit me that really this is how it happened. Wow. And uh, the next morning, oh my goodness, I, I did something. I, I exploded a bit, mm. went to the interior ministry because Johnny Hansen, who was then the PNDC Secretary for Interior, was my father's very close friend. They were all lawyers. And he had been to the house maybe three, four weeks earlier. So I went to him. A young 20-year-old, mm. furious, crying, asking him what happened. Did and, he give you an answer? he couldn't give me an answer. So I scattered his office, <gasps> pushed his table. Fortunately for him, he had an outlet. There was another door, so he got the police to hold me down and he, he, he disappeared, you know, so I went home. But later on, he, he was one of the few people who called me, who sent me, a, I still have his card, mm. you know, he would send me a card to just encourage me mm. and all that, and I've kept it as one of my memoirs wow. you know, from Johnny Hansen, who right. gave me good wishes in life. You right. know. Yeah. And fast forward, what was your reaction when you heard that former president Rawlings had passed on? Well, very mixed. You know, I think that nobody, I don't think any child deserves to lose their parents. Right. So the first thing I thought about was the kids and the wife. You know, but I also felt, well, so we never got to know. Maybe America will appear one day. Um, he was one of the soldiers who managed to escape miraculously. And uh, I had a campaign of five, and about seven press conferences since 1999. And, you know, and America was hanging around in Lome. I don't know where he is now. In those days, I was, I was determined even to locate him. And we traced him to Nigeria and other mm. places, yes. You know, and uh, when it happened, I... Uh, well, I've had closure already. I, I okay. had decided that, look, life must go on. My father don't want us, mm -hmm. and, you know, to continue to live yeah. with that, you know. So that, that's what happened. He'll I, be proud of you. Say it again? He'll be proud of you. Well, I hope. Um, <laughs> I hope he was, he was a nationalist. I mm -hmm. mean, he's, um, he was born in... Oh, Ohio. so you got that from him then? Yeah, he's... he's, he's he, I, he spoke a lot to me. We were right. very, very close friends, mm. and I was the I was the el I wasn't the eldest. But the two bigger ones were Before girls, you. Right. and so uh, you, you became a friend of mine. And you mm. tell me all sorts of stories about the World War mm. when they were in from five in right. infancy Supreme during the World War and a, a plane crash in, mm -hmm. in Cape Coast something the West African Frontier Force. And you tell me nice stories about Ghana's political history, mm. and when you sat on a steamer. You know a steamer? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to, from Takrade to uh, Liverpool to right. go to school, uh, oh, okay. you know, and to do law and all right. that. So we became very close. But what I realized that he was, he was such a caring person, not materialistic. And there were certain things he did that have lived with me. And I know when you're young and you hear certain words, it lives with you forever. And it imbibes with you. I'm writing my memoir. Some of the oh, details. Oh, I can't wait to read some it. Some of the details. <laughs> I remember on. one yeah. afternoon in uh, at home, and he called me. You know that that I'll tell that story in my right. memoir. That's you know, exciting. So, yeah, yeah. So your wife went to Wesley Girls. Wesley. Did you yes. two meet in Cape Coast? No, no, no. Ah. Uh, interesting way we met. Yeah. How did you meet her? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Uh, very interesting story. Mm -hmm. I, I I had a friend mm -hmm. in Legon, a lady. So I was going to visit her. Um, was it a person of interest? I wouldn't say so, okay. but you know, I knew her boyfriend, okay. we were friends. Okay. And I went to visit her, and then when I entered the room, there was this beautiful lady sitting there. 
And I, something just struck me, and I said, so I'm going to marry this girl. Oh, so did you when, tell her, or you just no, said it to yourself? I said it to myself. So right. when the friend came, I said, can you introduce, introduce me her. to your friend? Right. You know, so that's when we started dating. Yeah. Um, so uh, you've known each then, other for how long? Oh, we just celebrated our 25th anniversary. Wow. Mm, so Congratulations. Is, yes, how yes. have you kept it together for 25 ah. years? I'm sure she's <laughs> done most of the job. Really? Oh, well, the women uh, always do the job. No, I'm also a good guy. You know? Right. <laughs> I mean, I, mean, I, mean I, under, I, I think... Yeah, yeah, your wife is staring at you. Can you just... <laughs> <laughs> She's wondering, huh? <laughs> you know, I'm a good guy. I mean, yeah. I think so. I think so. Mm -hmm. um, I say this without being... Right. Arrogant, as they call me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've had that oh, so I've many that times. Many like you're times. arrogant. But, yes, I don't know why, because... But anyway, yeah. <laughs> I will deal with that. We will talk about yeah. that. I'm not. I'm a people's person. I'm yeah. a street guy. I, I love everybody. So I have a lot of musician friends. Mm. I've promoted boxers, yeah. musicians. You've promoted musicians? Of course. Which of musicians? Are, a lot of them are my friends. Yeah? You know? Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> right. So who's your favorite musician then? Oh, Daddy Lumba. Without him, oh, you know, wow. You're a Lumba yeah, fanatic. I'm, I'm a Lumba person. Yeah? You know, in fact, <laughs> I visit him from time to time. Oh, you do? Yeah. How so is he doing? He's good. Okay. Um, I went to see him maybe a month ago. Mm. A month, he's, he's gone quite close to me. Right. So we had a little chat. Yeah. You know. And, uh, okay. I love him. And yeah. I, uh, so 25 years together with your wife. How many children? Three. Oh, Three are you children. going to add on? Say again? Are you going to add on? Oh, your she, wife she, just... She doesn't the, the want look me. your she, wife gave... She, she doesn't want me because, you see, I said my father had 14. So you, I, you I want three, more? Three is too few. And I keep saying... Okay. And your wife says no. <laughs> no. You know, today is educated women. They don't want, <laughs> they don't want to labor. <laughs> well, she wants to work. <laughs> well, she's a professional. She's a professional, yeah. yeah. But, you know, I, I think it's unfair. But how many would it's you unfair. want to have? Another 14? S or beat no, your dad's six, record? Six. Oh, no, six. You want six? I want three more. Three more. But she's but not... now I think I'm you've too given old. Up. I can't look after Kate. So she's gone and brought a little dog <laughs> who sleeps in our room and all that. But I, I, I take Well, it. she's <laughs> making up for. <laughs> you know, but I think right. um, relationships are very important. Yeah. Um, it's our outlook towards women mm -hmm. and working together as one mm -hmm. and enjoying being with your wife and mm -hmm. celebrating and respecting her. What's the one thing that hasn't changed about her? About her? Your wife, yeah. Hey. Hmm. Or maybe two or three. No, the one thing. Oh, no, she's, yeah. she's very loving, but mm -hmm. she's very strong. Right. And I, these days I fight her a bit because, you know, as she's grown, she's become a bit of, you know, those do who do the women lobby, <laughs> 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 women emancipation, <laughs> you know, so, yeah. but she's, I mean, I, I think it's good. Mm. Um, I always feel that in Ghana there hasn't been a deliberate attempt to push down women. Okay. I may be wrong. That's how I felt. Okay. And, and, and so if we are not careful with this aggression, for, as they say, affirmative action, mm. the young guys are going to suffer. And I think the statistics are beginning to show. Mm. They are telling from the schools now. They are yeah, the female enrollment has it's, 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 shot it's, up. It's, it's astronomical. It's yeah. You know, and the guys have just fallen out. And it's not very good. And uh, yes, we should treat women with respect. I believe respect is very critical. Is that what has kept you together? Of course. You yeah. have to be loving and respectful. You know, I don't like guys who maltreat women. Mm -hmm. I mean, I cannot believe you can... Hit a woman. How possible? There must be something wrong with you. Right. You know, it should never happen to you. Mm -hmm. But there's one thing the women, those who talk about women emancipation mm -hmm. never talk about. What's that? And I argue with her about it. I think there's a lot of sexual harassment of young women in Ghana. It's something I'm very passionate about. Okay. I told the Men's Fellowship that the Methodist said we should lead it. I deliberately spoke to over 20 young ladies, mm -hmm. interviewed them, and 17 said we're being asked for sexual favors before they get, before the job. They get a job. Right. And it's a very serious matter. Nobody wants to talk about it. You, the women who talk about, who are the frontline women fighting emancipation, they never mention it. It's as if it's the elephant in the room. Mm -hmm. You know, it's something I'm really, and we have to begin to shame people mm -hmm. and punish people for that. And I hear it's worse in the ministries. Oh, I, I'm, I'm here. I'm hearing that. Tell me about it. You know, yes. Yeah, it's, it's I see a lot of uh, women talk about it. Sadly, and these are women who have experienced it. That's you know? right. But they don't come 
all out to talk no, about. I, I realized this because some snippets. some ladies came to me for mm -hmm. sponsorship, and I was able to just my modest mm -hmm. thing sign up. And they, and they were surprised. Yes, they, in fact, they left my office, then walked back in. No, the, there's said, something missing. They, they said, no, uh, "What am I you doing?" You are, the, you are the only person <laughs> been to who hasn't asked. I said, "What are you talking about?" Then, so I was shocked. Mm -hmm. You know, so these are very serious national issues. Mm -hmm. We have a serious national orientation matter that mm -hmm. we have to deal with. Mm -hmm. And we, ha we the men, have to lead. Okay. You should be confident enough to, to, to wrap a woman if mm -hmm. you want the woman. Why? Don't use your advantage of office mm -hmm. and all that. And I, I know it happens a lot even in the media, yeah. even in the film it industry. Hap it happens everywhere. And it's wrong. Yeah, everywhere. And we, have to, we, have, to, we have to tackle yeah. it. Yeah. And people are beginning to accept it as a norm. And I think it's wrong. Mm. It's, 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 it's wrong right. on society. Mm. You don't want that done to your daughter. Yeah. You should never do it to somebody else's yeah. daughter. Okay. You know, so those are things I'm passionate about. Mm -hmm. And I, it's one of the things I want to fight on okay. and, and talk to the Ghanaian people. We need to believe in our pledge. Absolutely. And believe in our country. Absolutely. And do what is right. Absolutely. So for somebody from Kumasi, I mean, you mentioned that Methodist through and through. Yes. You never considered Prempe College? Ah, I'll tell you the story. You know, <laughs> Royal International School was mm -hmm. my primary school. Right. When, we, when we got to, um, in those days of stage five, or stage six, stage five. Mm. And then, you know, the Kumasi teachers were so in awe mm -hmm. of the Cape Coast schools. Ah. That they so okay, now you are the top student, so, so we'll give Cape you Prempe Coast. or, no, they said Prempe or oh. Pokuare. Okay. And one other guy, so all of us, none of us. Mm-hmm. I went home and I showed the form to my dad. Mm -hmm. He was angry and livid. Because it has to be <laughs> in fancy fancy So he was the one who got, who got it changed. He wow. He came back the next day. Our, 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 um, our teacher was Mr. James of <laughs> blessed memory. <laughs> and he said to him, I went to infancement from Oyuko in the bush. My son is going to infancement oh school. Oh, my God. You know? And in those days... Um, I used to be quite brilliant. I, yeah. I, I, I was one of the top students. Well, uh, you ended up as an engineer. You <laughs> definitely have to be brilliant <laughs> to go through that. You know, so, um, in those days, the infant supreme school will write to you when the brown envelope arrives in your house. Yeah. You see the infant supreme stamp on it. It was so know, much pride. Oh, so much pride. Yeah. You know? So, it's, 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 it's something that... It, it, yeah. How did how did Infancipim shape you? I mean, oh, I know Infancipim boy, uh, boy is how you talk about you know the kind of no, men who have gone through your school. Infancipim uh -huh. was a difficult place. Yeah. Discipline, toughness. A lot of my toughness, apart from crew room, mm -hmm. <laughs> being around the street, mm -hmm. walking about Infancipim, they would really bully you. Really. It was tough. I mean, serious bullying. But it was good. It, I think it toughened us. Okay. You know, you know, in Infancipum, somebody can tell you to sleep under his bed. <laughs> <laughs> and then you sleep on the bed because the springs are weak. Oh, you can imagine. Yeah. You know, and pulling your nose and many things. Filling the gap. And then yeah. I, my wife says I'm the best dresser of a bed. In yeah. Fact, I, you, you were taught that? Yes, because you have to dress two beds. Your senior, you have to go and dress your senior's bed before you dress yours. your bed, before you leave. And woe betide you. In Infancipum, in my house, Lockhart Swizer, we were not good at athletics or sports, but we were neat. Okay. So we were winning all the, the competition on neatness. On right. Saturdays, they would come around, open everybody's trunk, make sure your things are well laid, your bed is well laid, and your fingernails well cut, and woe wow. betide you if you are deducted max. It means you can't go to town. That weekend, <laughs> you know, you're not allowed to go to right. town. You know, and, uh, although later on I used to run away without yeah. eggs yet. Yeah. You were never soccer. caught? Uh, caught once, but the sports master, he knew I loved sports. Right. So Kotoko and <laughs> Hazakes in Kipus. Right. You know, not in Kipus, in Takrade. In we Takrade, we wow. run to Takrade. Wow. <laughs> to go and watch, yeah. you know, with uh, Daniel Kerma, Uwaski. You know. Are they all around now? Danny, Daniel Kerma, he was in the uh, um, the arts business. He died oh, right. not long ago. Was my mm. colleague, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was working with Jacob Echebel on mm. the Atlantas. Right. I think he went to Nafti. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Daniel Kerma. You know, so, and Fancipim really taught mm. me the discipline. Right. You know, that I think is needed to live a life. Mm. And that's why I am a, a disciplinarian. And right. I believe in imposing order and discipline. It's absolutely vital. Has it changed? I mean, your son went to Infancipim. But has anything changed at Infancipim now? Well, I... Have they become softer? A bit. 
Yeah. When I look at my son, <laughs> but I think it's down to the JSS system. Right. I have oh, been you, against you, it. You, really? Oh, yeah. I think we should go back to the O levels, A levels. Because in those days, you leave home at 12 years. You know, so you spend seven years in school and you go and meet your sis form as they look like puppets to you. And you serve them, you get trained, and by form five, you are even becoming yeah. an adult. Yeah. And now, you can't tell. You know, because when somebody is finished JSS, what are they? But in those days, when people finished O levels, I don't want to be political here, but that's why I blame the Rawlings administration and the, the, the pumps card and taking on things from the IMF, uh, so that we should change our schooling system. What has it produced? Has it achieved the intended objective? I don't think so. Yeah, they said it was going to create middle level labor and technician. It hasn't done that. And I think that the JSS is the worst thing to happen to Ghana, in my personal view. Mm. Uh, people can disagree with me because the beauty about the boarding school system at the time, in my dormitory, we had Brody Mans, whose father was a minister. We had uh, Daniels, whose father became a minister in the man's regime. We had the farmer's son, Abu Aji. We had Nimo from Krobo. We had everybody, different parts of the country. We became like a bond. You know, and you didn't care whether somebody was from Somenya or mm. from Kumasi or anything. And it built us together. It built the country together. You know, now we are not careful. If you are born somewhere, you've got to go through JSS, and if you're not careful, day school, day, it's not good for our national cohesion and our identity. It's not good for it. We have to Is think a computerized of, selection program not solving I that? don't even, I don't, well, I don't like that. I, I, I don't <laughs> like that. I'm a bit uh, conservative. Right. You know, the chats, you know, we used to have those, uh, the conference of assisted yeah. schools, the headmasters yeah. of assisted schools. And if you want to go to infancy, I selected in France from Ghana National. Mm. It was a third school, Winneba. Mm. You know, you were given. You trade. certainly wanted to go to the central region. Oh yes, <laughs> you know, because my father, you know, I knew <laughs> what he had gotten from being at in France where line. he had been able, what he had been able to achieve. So I was determined to do that. If somebody wants to go to Achimota, let them file it. Mm. If they make it, let them get admitted. If they don't, they should go to their second choice. And and. Uh, and you know, so yeah. why do you dump it into some faceless computer selection? I am not in favor of that. I've wow. never been in favor of that. Wow. I think JSS should go. It should go. We go back to O levels. That time, everybody did common entrance, and we knew. And it. really, and I when mean, I was coming yeah. to France, my talk about the best student wanted to come <laughs> and, come and meet some sharp guys from Rich Church and Morningstar, yeah. and you know, yeah. you know, so it was it was it was lovely, hmm. you know. But now. We have destroyed the educational system. And is free SHS worsening it? I, I wouldn't say so. Okay. It has provided an outlet for those who couldn't right. afford it. Because okay. it's very important. There are a lot of people who could not afford. Mm. And I know of one lady. She's a lady now. She's my colleague in, mm. in, in Royal International. Mm. Who was the one who was always competing with me for first position? <laughs> I, 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 Where is she now? She's in Kumasi. Right. You know, because she couldn't get, you know, although she got Wesley Girl somehow. Mm. She, she couldn't make it. She, she couldn't make it. Right, because of and financial any, challenges. I, I, whenever I see her, I go to Kumasi and I see her, I want to weep. That, that right, was, that, because that, that could, was your competitor, your that, closest. That is a doctor there for you, some brilliant girl who guests. Yeah. You know. So it's, it's. It's important that we look again at our educational system. Okay. I quite remember I met, was it, was it Professor Jangma was the time? Mm. I met him somewhere and I complained to him. I blamed him. You, the professionals who encourage Rawlings to change the, uh, the, system. the system. Because when you finish O levels, people to go off and work. Yeah. Go to the army, do something. Now you can't work with you. You can't. No. You can't. No. And why? Why should we saddle ourselves with something that was dumped on us by some donors who wanted to make sure they keep us down? It is completely wrong. Right. And again, we should introduce cleanliness at the local level. Mm. At the local level. It's absolutely vital that we, we become green, environment friendly. You, you must be a climate change. Um. Of course, yes. yes. I, I serve on the World Federation of Engineering Organizations right. Committee for Engineering and Environment. And I'm... I, I'm you really, are pro-climate. Uh, of course. Mm. I'm, I'm, my postgraduate was in environmental engineering. Right. So I'm, I, I, I don't want to see a tree knocked down. Right. You know, and I see it happening. And 
people should be made to replace that tree mm. at a cost. Right. You know, so we have to build our country with the kinds of values that others have thrived on. We don't right. need to reinvent the wheel. Right. It's what do you do for fun? Apart from for fun. following football. Oh, I'm a time, I, I'm a time man. You know? Oh, you love to party. I that I know. <laughs> <laughs> you know that I, I know. I, you can find me in most of the clubs. Now they call them clubs. We used to call them discos. Disco. <laughs> <laughs> when I say disco, the kids say, ah, that's an old man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's so true if i go to in those i used to go to before covid i'll go to moving pick oh. and then i'll go to plot seven and then i'll go to twist and oh, i'll get oh, home wow. i'll get home at three and then i have a visa on friday ah, for my wife just, you know, i've been have to twist just one. Oh, she gives you a visa on, on friday on friday night, night. Yes, on friday night and so but sometimes you, i drag her along and she doesn't uh, like this she, very that, much. Uh, she doesn't look like that high <laughs> <laughs> she, doesn't like she went to wesley girls <laughs> oh yeah but you know she's she's good at partying too she's, oh really oh, yeah. maybe just at her at, <laughs> in her house maybe <laughs> maybe just in her house anyway um i mean you've you've said so much my takeaway uh, for the night is the is the fact that we need to serve absolutely we need to serve. That, service that's mm -hmm. sacrifice and selflessness right the capacity to give to those who do not have mm. the ability to support those who don't have and the empathy if you don't have the heart for that don't go near politics don't right. go near it mm -hmm. because this is what 35 million people mm -hmm. who need to be mm -hmm loved yeah. so if you don't have that affection that love to give don't mm -hmm. go near it so we want to encourage everybody the younger ones who think that their quickest route is politics it is wrong yeah <laughs> you have to have a career I, i'm an engineer yeah okay yeah. so do little consultancies here and there of course politics has dominated my life mm -hmm. but i have always something to, to fall, fall. absolutely you understand and absolutely. i think everybody should do that my other worry mm. is the 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 I, I don't know what word to use but the way the polytechnics mm. were changed to universities. universities i think it was atrocious decision completely because that middle level technical support yeah, that technical, we need yeah. to support industry to operate and maintain now the polytechnics are you know offering human resource i don't understand uh, all the humanity humanity marketing yeah. you see people they say they're doing marketing uh, yeah. finance some new courses i don't understand it yeah. and there are no jobs there for that yeah. we want to industrialize we need those who operate and maintain the machinery the pro the, the processing companies yeah. and all that that's what we need as a country right it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Oh, yeah. thank you very you, much. You, you, you are a great talker. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, I'm sure you've been talking your whole life. <laughs> not, not exactly. Yeah. Not exactly. Just I feel very passionate, passionate about, about what, yeah. what I'm talking yeah. about. Thank and, you. Uh, thank you so much I'm very for grateful. honoring our invitation. I'm very grateful. Engineer Kwabena Ejapon. Thank you very yeah. much. Yeah, wonderful talking to you. Thank you. All right, that's it for Star Chat. We have an interview on South African tourism uh, coming up in
Telling you about this Easter campaign 2022 and whatever you're thinking, yes, Easter is around the corner. I know everybody's making plans and I'm sure, trust me, Easter is great in Cape Town. Um, if you haven't been to Cape Town, there's an opportunity to go to South Africa. Wherever you find yourself in South Africa, go to Cape Town and make sure that you go to Stellenbosch and enjoy some wine. Anyway, it's good to have you uh, to talk about um, Easter uh, for, what's the name of your company again? From Stella Travel. Stella, Stella Travel, and you're promoting this Easter campaign. Exactly. And your name is Rita? Rita Donkumbari. Donkumbari, that's a nice name. Where are you Thank from? You. I'm from Upper West. Okay, what does it mean? You don't know. Oh, <laughs> I know. I do know. I do know. <laughs> you have to think for a minute. <laughs> but what I does do it know. mean? It means in Niti will never end. Oh. Unfortunately. Oh, interesting. Interesting. But let's talk about Easter uh, 2020 campaign. What What is all of this about? Okay. So um, Stella Travel mm. in collaboration with South Africa Tourism. Okay. Are planning a couple of trips to South Africa. So we are looking at three cities. That's okay. Durban, Johannesburg, and Cape Town, which oh, is my yay. favorite. You know? Yay. <laughs> Yay, definitely Cape Town. You can't go to South Africa without going to Cape exactly. Town. Yeah. Yeah. So um, what we are looking at, we already have packages made. Okay. But no one is restricted to that. Okay. If you have your own ideas of what exactly you would like to do in SA, you meet us, then you discuss. we'll discuss and do according. And it is possible. It's No very, matter very what your plan is, exactly. it's possible. It's very possible. And but of course, it will come with a cost. Exactly. Okay. So, averagely, how much are people paying for this trip if they are interested in going to South Africa? Okay. So, the most expensive city in South Africa, I'm sure you know, is Cape Town. Town. Of, yes. of course. So, yes. if you're looking at um, um, five nights, six days, mm. hotel, tours, mm. and flights, roughly around 23,000 Ghana cities for Cape Town. Okay. But the other cities are a bit lower compared okay. to Cape Town. But even that is a good deal for exactly. 23000 to Cape Town. Uh, what's that in dollars? So you're looking at um, that in dollars. Um, yeah. that should now be. the CD is misbehaving, <laughs> so I can't even, because it, will, it might change tomorrow. <laughs> Let's stick with 23000 <laughs> So they walk into your office with 23000 CDs. Yes. Whatever happens to the dollar is not their business. No. Absolutely. That, I mean, that's very important to note. All right. But if you're thinking about this package, yes, uh, Deborah is beautiful. Where else did you mention? Johannesburg. Johannesburg is beautiful. Yeah. But take my word that none of these cities come close to Cape Town. Cape Town. Trust me. And when you're in Cape Town, make sure you're tasting wine. Exactly. It's, the best, it's the best time. And the weather is beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, the weather is beautiful. I think generally around this time, the weather is beautiful in South exactly. Africa. Exactly. Not yeah. too hot, not too cold. Yeah. and. Yeah. You can do basically everything. Right. And even for Cape Town, mm -hmm. we have the wine tasting. So you mm -hmm. can just start from one winery to the other. Yeah, yeah. And it's so interesting. Is it a spelling? We'll do all that. You do all that. Exactly. Oh, You're okay. going to about five different wineries. So. Okay. The, oh, that's interesting. And um, <clears throat> what is the duration? I mean, what's the deadline for signing up uh, to this package? Okay. So since we are looking at Easter and considering mm -hmm. visas and other things, mm -hmm. roughly by second week in mm. April latest, okay. you should have second considered weekend. us for us to assist because um, the High Consulate is willing to assist us okay. on this very package because we are doing it to South African tourism. Can I bring on my best worker at Star FM? You can bring anyone yeah, at all. I'm not all. paying you. <laughs> <laughs> I think we'll have to look at that. We'll, and we'll see talk what, about yeah, that. Sure. It should be possible because sure. I'd love to have my best worker go to Cape Town to indulge. Sure, we'll have so a look at that. We'll, we'll definitely have a look, have a look, at, look at that. At that. I'll yeah. take your word. Don't, don't worry, I'll give you pressure. It will happen. And so you have till now, between now and second week of April, yes. to book. And I'm telling you for a fact that, yes, Ghana is beautiful. There, there's so much to explore in Ghana. But they also say travel and see. Exactly. Uh, it's good to go and see other places, come back and try to... Uh, you know, roll out some of the things you see in other countries. And so I'm telling you for a fact that going to South Africa for Easter is one of the best things you can ever, ever undertake. And my preference and my recommendation is Cape Town at all costs. Yes, maybe it's just a bit pricey, but it is m value for money. It is worth, worth it. You may probably want to <laughs> stay longer than the five nights or the six nights that uh, you are offering. Anyway, so what should you do and not do as part of this package if you're signing up? Okay, so if you're signing up, it's basically five nights, okay. six days. Okay. If you have a partner, 
If you have a partner, yes. Your You're partner. paying. Okay, the f of price course, might go, go a up, little because not of, up, up. Because of airfare. Airfare, yes. Right, okay. But that's the only difference. Beside okay. that, everything is just almost the same. Okay. Yeah. And so we were talking about the do's and don'ts. Okay, so this. Um, this trip, let's say if you were to be going alone, you won't have, I mean, you have to um, handle your own transports and other stuff. Okay. But for this very package, you get your meet and greet at the airport. You're mm. taken to your hotel. Mm. Every tour that you're going on, there'll be a car waiting for you to take you to the tour, then back to your hotel. Oh, so basically, VIP treatment. Exactly. Basically, yeah. you don't have to do anything. But if you were to be going on... 23,000 in Cape Town. That's really cool. Very cool. That's really cool. Very because cool. Because Cape Town is expensive. The most expensive place yeah. in South Africa. Yeah. And getting it for 23,000 yeah. is the best. Yeah. You can't ask for any other thing. It's uh, a... Yeah. It's the it's the it's the Easter egg given to you for free. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely given to you for free. Okay, so how do we book? Okay, so for those who want to book, mm -hmm. they can either visit our office, Where? which is in the Grand Oyeman building at airport. Airport, okay. Yes. Or we don't want to travel all the way. <laughs> Give us a number to call. Okay, so the, the number booking. is um zero two four four seven three six six four one. Yeah, but it's right. Zero two four four seven three six six, six, six four, four one. one. That's the number to call. Are you on social media? It's yes, easier that are. way. Yes. So for social media, mm. you have to go to um. Okay. So the website for South African Tourism, you find all this um okay, packages there. So that's okay. www dot dot net. Dot net. Of course. Yes. Okay. Okay. And uh, on social media, do you have social a, media? So you find Stella Travel on Instagram. Stella Travel FCM on Instagram okay. on Facebook. You're not so, on Twitter? Not yet. Why not? We'll you be going there very soon. Should. So, at Stella Travel FCM um. on Twitter and Facebook. Don't worry. I'm sure people... Is that your number you gave out? Ah, so they are calling to book. We better wrap up so they can book their, <laughs> their trip to South Africa. Next time you walk into the studio, just put it on silent. It's not your fault. It's Erica's fault, the producer. She failed to tell you. Don't worry. It's not your fault. Um, but I'm happy someone is calling. Um, and... So if I come in and I want to do Durban and Cape Town, it's possible. Yes, it's possible. You to, can do to all curate. the three cities. What if I want to do Pretoria? It's not yes. bad. It's not bad. So like that, it's Pretoria is still in Joburg. So yeah. so you can, you can still take a, a bus or something. Exactly. And, and go. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. That's wonderful. Anyway, so as she mentioned, you can find them on Instagram at um, Stella Travel F C M on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, you can also go to www.southafrica.net for more information. And they take mobile money, Alo. Oh, you yeah, do. We do. You, they take mobile money. So you can definitely contact them. Remember that this is a one-off package. The price is amazing. It's a jaw-dropping package. You should sign up. South Africa is value for money destination. Trust me when I tell you this. Forget about the other cities. Definitely go to Cape Town and have a time of your life. The weather is beautiful. The people are lovely people. Lovely, lovely people. And um, Stella Travel is putting together activities for you and your friends and family. Go meet other families as well. Network, connect, make deals in South Africa, especially when you w walk into these uh, the, the, the wine shops and the... Yeah, you have a good deal there. So SouthAfrica.net, that's it, www.southafrica.net. There's another... Um, one here, IG Travel to SA. Yes. Is that also a handle yes. for you? And they're on Twitter. Travel to SA one on Twitter. Twitter. We'll get confused with that one. <laughs> but yeah, it's been amazing talking to you, Rita. And I hope that people sign up for this to experience South Africa, to experience Cape Town. And uh, we'll talk about getting my stuff. One of maybe I'll put my producer Erica on it. I know people are going to be very jealous, but she deserves it. Erica, do you want to go to South Africa? Do you have a passport? Erica, do you have a passport? I'm, I'm not sure she has a passport. Oh, no, we can even assist her to get a passport. Oh, you can assist. Oh, you can, can do that. So if you yeah. don't have a passport, don't Stella a Travel can still help. Exactly. Oh, that, oh for 23000 Oh, that's a cool deal. I should have met you earlier. You should have, indeed. <laughs> I should have met you earlier. Thank you so much, Rita. It's been amazing talking to you. And I think that we will push this for you. It's a good trip. It's always good to travel out of Ghana, come back and run a few ideas. Thank yeah. you so much for having us. And 
will still think about putting one of your stuff oh, don't, don't, board. Don't think it's about it. Ju just, say, just say you are doing it. So Because Erica says she has a passport. I'm sure it has expired. But we'll renew it for her to go and have a time of her life in South Africa. No, be small slaying. <laughs> the girl is always posing in front of doors on her WhatsApp status. <laughs> but yeah, it would be great to have her in yeah. South Africa. But Stella, um, Rita of Stella Travel, yeah. all the best with this. And um, I hope it turns out great. Azikola, are you jealous? It's like you want to go to. Thank you. You want to go to. Weren't you in Dubai recently? Uh, I, w I would like to experience this. Oh, you want to be a globetrotter? <laughs> 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 anyway, thank you so much, Rita, for talking to us. Thank you for tuning in to Star One with Rupert Father, and this time for Star Chat live on Ultimate FM in Kumasi, Empire in Kumasi, Bliss King, the mine, uh, the oh, the same mine, the man who controls night radio, will be walking in in a bit uh, to give you the best of the night. But don't forget to follow the conversation on social media and sign up for this trip to South Africa through Stellar Travel. Have a beautiful night, Rita. Thank you. <laughs> Have a good night.